here we have a motherboard, a tiny motherboard that looks something like this with pins on the bottom. So this one probably connects to something and the customer wants the Wi-Fi module replaced on this. The customer sent us a Wi-Fi module that looks something like this. I believe it's a QFN because I do see pins on the top right and left, not on the bottom. And we do see a lot of squares in the middle. I think those squares are connecting as one piece, just like a QFN chip with a big pad in the center, but this one is divided. Let's take a look. The Wi-Fi chip is big and we are not used to working with such big components under the microscope because look at this, we can barely see part of the chip. That's the Wi-Fi chip right here. And like I said, I believe those pads in the center are all connecting as one. So instead of having one big pad in the center, they divided the pads. Let's measure and see. Measure from here to here, to here, to here, to here, yes. So that's one big pad in the center. It looks like we have no connects here. This one is connected, not connected, connected. Or they may be connected from the back, we do not know. All right, and if we take a look at the motherboard, the chip is soldered on like this. Right now it looks like the Wi-Fi module is made out of two layers. We have a BGA layer that's soldered onto the Wi-Fi module, which is soldered onto the board. So it's a little bit risky applying heat from the top because we may end up tampering with the solder balls or with the top layer. And if we apply heat from the bottom, we have plastic. So we may have to use our soldering iron along with hot air and we have to be careful. Let's see how we're going to do this. The first thing I want to do is secure that board in the board holder so it does not wobble. And maybe we should use a Barlow lens so we can see more of that board. Right now we're only seeing like one tenth of the board. So with the Barlow lens, we should be able to see more of that board. Let's try a 0.75X Barlow lens. We may have to go to 0.5, but let's see how the 0.75 looks. Now we can raise up the microscope. And I think 0.75 may not be enough. That's 0.75x, it's doable. But maybe if we go for the 0.5x, that will be a better option. And by the way, the microscopes that we sell, they do come with the 0.75x and 0.5x Barlow lenses. And look at that, now we can see the whole module. So I think what we're going to do is apply heat, right, top, left, right, top, left. We're going to apply heat in circles like this. The bottom is not soldered and maybe we can grab that module from the bottom here, if we can. Because there's no tweezer that will be able to grab it from here to here. It's too wide. This is the first time I work on something like this, so we may learn something new today. I'm going to increase airspeed a bit. We do not want to grab the chip or the module from here because we may end up taking that second layer off. It looks like it's a BGA piece, the one on top. We do not really care about this one because the customer wants it changed, but still.
Let's add some flux to help with the flow of solder. I don't know how much heat it will take to desolder this module, but we're going to have to find out. We always start with low heat. I'm talking about maybe 390C. And then if it doesn't work, we make our way up. I'm trying to get a good grip from the bottom and I think I do have a good grip. We're going to have to increase heat. It looks like we need more heat and maybe I'm going to increase airspeed and see what happens. Like I said, I do not want to heat up from the bottom because we have the plastic pins on the bottom. Okay, I think it's going to take more heat and airspeed all the way to the max because the chip is not even moving. Come on, almost there, out, wow, and just making sure we did not knock off any components, great, because we have components on the top, we have a cap here, components here, so everything is intact, I just pulled off. one movement. If you shake your hand, then you're going to knock off components on the sides. Let's start by pre-applying leaded solder onto those pads. Should we solder the pins pin by pin or should we reflow or what should we do? We're going to have to apply solder on the bottom here because we cannot solder those by hand. We're going to have to reflow. But what about the sides? Honestly, we are used to soldering a chip that size or even smaller with 50 solder balls. But now we are working with this whole big chip. I do not know what type of solder is on the board, but...
So now the mixture of solder looks matte because we did not desolder the old solder that's on the board. Maybe we should do that. I do not want any unleaded solder on the board because it's going to take more heat to work with unleaded. We want leaded solder, so since we are not sure what type of solder was used here, let's go ahead and desolder all that solder off the board. And now the joints are shiny. Working with big pads is somewhat satisfying. And let's see how satisfying it is to apply solder onto those center pads. and I feel like a machine. One pad to another. I can simply drag solder, but I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying the piece of art that we see here. Let's make sure that this is the right chip and not the old one. Yeah, this is the new one. The thing is, we cannot grab that module. I cannot grab it, so all we can do is tap it. Solder in the center is raised. So the module is not making a flat solid connection. We're going to have to heat up until it settles down in place. And we're going to see what happens. Hopefully we can do this one time and not have to go back and redo the job. I mean, everything looks aligned right now. The chip is going to fix itself. Once we apply heat, just as in that last chip that fixed itself in the last video that we did, Nintendo Switch. The chip went flying. All right. Let's apply heat. Okay, it's starting to shift. So we have to tap it. I think we did an awesome job. Look at this. We did an awesome job. We're just going to have to get rid of this solder blob that came from under. Nice.
I mean, right now the chip should be soldered on perfectly, with exception to the bridges that we see here. We're gonna fix that now. Let's take off that barlow lens. And maybe I'll put in the 0.75x. So let's go over this chip, pin by pin. Not because we have to. The chip is probably soldered on perfectly. But it feels satisfying working on such a big chip. Let's see. Maybe I'm getting myself into trouble right now. Maybe we're gonna start to have bridges. Nice. Wow, wow. Is that satisfying or what? With exception to the bridges that we have here. But that's something that we can fix, no problem. All right, good. Let's go back to our bent conical tip. Nice. Let's do this side here. And we have to be more careful because we have components close by. And right now I'm using a 0.3 millimeter solder wire, which you can find and purchase off our site for those of you in the same type of business. A bigger wire will not work here because it's gonna end up bridging. Let me show you the difference between 0.8 millimeter wire and 0.3. I have both here and I use both. That's 0.3 and that's 0.8. You see how 0.8 is too big? 0.3 is perfect and that's when you use different wires for different jobs. The question is, how much are we going to charge the customer? The work takes time. It's nothing that can be done quick. We have to be fair to the customer because he mailed over two boards and not just one. I'll do the second board off camera. It will be the same process. And we have a customer that just came in. Look at that solder, how nice and shiny. That's what good solder looks like. And did we do everything? We did, right? Yeah, we did. Just want to make sure we don't have any bridges. And we're not going to be able to tell unless we clean up. Start with the swab and then the brush. The swab will suck up all the plugs and the brush will clean. I mean, the joints are too shiny that you cannot look at them. It's like looking at the sun. You can't make out what's going on with the joints, with the solder joints, not with the smoking joints. Do not confuse both. I do not smoke, but for those of you who do, 
Do not confuse solder joints with smoking joints. Smoking is bad for your health. It's a good thing I did not get into that habit of smoking. I could have. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.